welcome to uh, classic, <coughs> excuse me, classic car code. Uh, this is on the Jag as, again, the, the XK150. So you can see that's that new uh, panel in the back there. And uh, let's get rid of that bit of dirt. Um, so these are actually only uh, just put in with uh, self tappers on the side, but you can see it fits really well now there. Um, so what we're going to do is they're going to be welded in, but they won't be welded in until we've got everything sat right. This tonne has to be re, you can see all the surface rust. Uh, that's two, three, two and a half years ago it was out sandblasted, but there was bits that have come back through, so we're going to take it all back to bare metal. And obviously these ends need repairing. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, the tonne back off it now, take this uh, lower boot floor out, and then I can seal the, the corners up because obviously rainwater could get underneath. Not that it'll be used much in the rain, of course. So I'll get that sealed with uh, some automotive sealant. Um, and then we'll start cleaning up this. One of the, you can see here, um, obviously it's not welded down yet, as you can see. And you can see there's a gap there. Obviously once that's pushed down, it's, uh, it meets up right. Um, and we've got to put captive nuts in in the back there so basically obviously the tonne is welded uh, to the inner wings and then the quarter wings the out the back wings are then bolted on with seven bolts to uh, to the tonne and to the inner wing there's a, a black um, you can have black or I think it, I think it's only black you can get maybe black or white um, like a, a a joint strip that goes in there. I've got an old one we can use just now until I order up the the proper ones for it. Um, so they have to be able to fit in there and so this edging has to be absolutely spot on. There's a little issue here we need to fix up but again it's not this is not uh, pushed down as you can see and once it's sorted out it's okay but the problem is you can buy captive nuts that can weld on you can buy them by the bucket load but they have very little movement in them so what we're going to do and i can't get the original one so we're going to actually make something up this is a, a test one me here made um, and obviously it'd be better if we could get square nuts but they're kind of hard to get hold of as well so apart from making them and then threading them which is a lot of work i've come up with another idea uh, and i'll show you that in a minute the other thing we've done which is a little bit a bit unusual but as you know we had to cut these uh, rear panels out um, and and obviously what I don't want to do is I don't want to use the chassis twice um, I don't want to take it off the chassis to put it onto the uh, onto the uh, rotisserie which I've got in in Vienna which is why we're taking it up there to go to the sandblaster um, so we've come up with a plan the plan is is I've built these uh, extension boxes here and just fabricated them. It's fairly poorly fabricated, but it's strong enough for what we need. Um, so we know exactly where the chassis is. Yeah, so this is a, a basic solution that I've come up with to make a, a captive nut for uh, the tonne cover and the rear quarter wings. So you can see here that I can actually move this up and down. You can see there. And I've got a little bit of side movement as well. You see, because that's what we need. We need to be able to move them to get them into position, right? If we if we weld them into position, then there's some issue. We can't adjust the wing. So this is a 13 mil nut. I'll show you on the back in a minute. So I can tighten that. And you can see that it's not. This is not turning the square, and that's that's it tight. Now I can release it but it stays in the same situation and basically all it is is we had a few ideas this was one way of doing it with like a little square captive which is what they're normally like um, but they're pressed out and that would take forever to make uh, what I did do in the end was use this favorite tool of mine um, that the this is the hole puncher and the juggler here to make a and then what I, all I've done is it's very simple I've just juggled the edge there as you can see you can see there's a 
Try and get this right for the camera, sorry. It's not showing up. Yeah, you can see there's a juggled edge here, and then make it so long and then just cut it. And then what we'll do is these two, we'll just put two holes in it and just weld it, plug weld it on either side so that, as I say, we can just, and that way it's a very simple way of making a, a captive nut. And that's a lot of movement there, especially up and down. So I think that'll work. I don't see any reason why, why it won't. And I can, because you can't get your, your, your hand, well, you can get to the back of it uh, inside the tunnel, but you can move it. That's, that's the most important thing, is we can move it to where we want it. So if it's there, for instance, you know, let's say it's out, up there, and then we can just tighten it on the other end. From the outside, you can see that's not gonna turn. When I turn it back, it'll probably, yeah, see? So I think that'll do. Okay, so this gives you a kind of idea. This is not the panel it would be going on. It will be going on the tonne cover, which I'll show you in a second. So this is basically the plan that we uh, we have a situation where we can move this backwards and forwards. And you can see there's a half moon shape there, which will elongate more. And you can, and all we have to do then is push this in. So we can push it in from, it will actually come in from that side with a, with the bolt out, because the bolt's going on the outside, you push, you would push that in from there. Not quite, so there we go. So that would kind of push in from that side. And then give us a bit of wiggle room. Here now, this is, this is, so all this lip here has been, uh, here has been renewed and the lip underneath. I did this in a guillotine, this outer lip. So what's basically happening now is this is how it would be on the uh, the car, on the tonne, but we obviously have to mark it up first. Um, and they would be welded uh, between that and this, this outer edge, uh, which we can do afterwards once we've got them lined up. Um, and again, I can just undo that nut and I can move this, this, this around up and down. And in and out. Obviously, I haven't cut an oval in there yet because obviously I don't know where we don't know where it is yet. Um, so that's that's basically how it would work. You can see that would overlap. So it would be catching this side and and the other side at the same time. That's that's the, basically the point of the exercise. To, but it would have to be overlaid slightly so that we've got some wiggle room up and down. So I hope that uh, is understandable what, what we're trying to do um, and uh, I think that's a reasonably neat solution for for something that um, yeah could be a bit complicated there's a lot of uh, fettling to do to get this right but uh, it's all the way up the car so it's all, it's all the way up the tunny cover we had no choice but to take this tunny off because it was in seriously poor state in fact, it was basically just the main brackets that were holding it on. It wasn't until after we sandblasted it and we could see that it was virtually uh, rusted through. All this, all this edge, all the way along, both sides was completely gone. So you can see what, what here is new. That was gone completely. Um, and as I said, it was only the main brackets and the inside of the, the, the boot on the web that was holding it on. So there you go. You can see here, it doesn't look great. Um, but a lot of this is, was lead loaded before and it was quite badly corroded so I've taken all the corroded bits out and just tacked it all the way up, put a new, brand new strip in the side here and then tacked it all the way up. Now what I have to do now is put it back onto the car, you can see the other side's done. I also built a new piece in here, this was this, was this section, you can see how rotten it was and on, on the front has to be repaired as well. Uh, this is some of the bits that I took out. You can see I, I have to be very, very careful with it. This is the original captive bolts, and you can see how bad they were. But all these pieces were uh, welded or or tacked on to the underneath of there. You can imagine this 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 was under the other side, um, and I had to take it off a little bit of time, a little bit at a time. What what we'll do is. Once I find everything is okay and it's going to work and it just needs some slight cutting, but I know it will fit on the back of the, 
the tonic, the tonic will fit okay. Uh, what I'll then do there is, is, is re-weld everything, every other weld. Um, and then when it's on the car, this will be welded to the one on the, on the lip on the car, which I'll go over and show you. This will be spot welded to here. And then what we'll do is we'll actually, because there'll be a, basically a, a system like this, if you imagine this is the other side, this is the other side, and what we'll do is there'll be a gap like that, and what I'll do is I'll lead load right the way across this, this gap here. Um, so I catch this and this and this, but it'll all be spot welded in place first, and you can see that will then take up those bad areas there.